Hi. I was thinking, we're talking about fuel cells all the time in this course. They are really good. They are, they are beautiful. And it's a really good way, very efficient, to obtain energy directly from the chemical energy inside a compound. But what happens when we are dealing with a technological application at a big scale? Well, with this presentation we're going to deal with this problem. We're going to have a look at what happens, uh, which are the different well um, functions and which are the different operations that we need to do if we really want to generate a lot of energy. Uh, I have a power plant using fuel cells. As I said before, fuel cells are electrochemical devices which will allow us having very high efficiencies and electrical energy considering these electrochemical reactions with a very high yield compared to other kind of operations, especially thermal operations. So if you see, this is a very, very small voltage, 1.3, which is uh, well, there's really nothing we can feed with this. So, um, in order to increase this voltage, in order to increase the power that we obtain, it is very common, it's nearly necessary, to associate different individual cells into stacks. And then, um, either in series or in parallel, we will have higher power densities, depending on the application. So, we're trying to apply fuel cells at a very high scale, a very big scale, we will need to take into account some of the operations that we will have to do. These are previous actions, previous, I mean, to the fuel cell itself, uh, to these oxidation and reduction reactions, and posterior actions, mm, once the electricity has been obtained, which is the way we think we can do to improve this, um, this system. Well, this is the general scheme of a plant using fuel cells for electrical generation. Please don't, don't stop looking at this central part, which is the fuel cells module, not only one fuel cell, I would say that we have a stack of maybe 200 cells, individual cells, it depends on the power that we want to obtain. And if you see here, we can, uh, well, there are some fuel processing operations previous to the fuel cells, and some other conditioning energy operations posterior. Mm? In general terms, we can use a lot of different fuels for um, supplying energy, or for supplying um, this fuel to fuel cells. Mm, we can talk about natural gas, naphtha, um, especially natural gas is very common in this high scale operation, or even hydrogen, if we do have hydrogen, which is not very easy. And once we have this fuel, we're probably going to have to process it in order to obtain a stream which is very rich in hydrogen. Because, you know, hydrogen will be, um, at the end of the day, the fuel that we will oxidize in the fuel cell. Well, well we can use methanol or ethanol, but in general terms, this is hydrogen. So we will require to do some operations to fuel processing before we can have a rich um, hydrogen stream. And the heat, well the extra or additional heat that we have in this um, exothermic reaction, which is the electrochemical reaction, well we can use it at other parts of the plant, like by instance, as we will see in just a couple of slides, some of the processing operations uh, that are well, energetically mm, not so good. Mm. So we can recover the heat and even use it for cogeneration, among other things. So what is fuel pretreatment? Uh, fuel pretreatment uh, basically consists of cleaning the original fuel, of reforming the fuel, and to further uh, convert uh, what we had previously into a very pure hydrogen stream. Basically, we need to have a high quality product, hydrogen, before we can use it in a fuel cell. Uh, and because, because we in these operations at big scale, uh, it's very common to use natural gas, which comes from the pipelines. Uh, we don't know what the hell is this, which is the quality of this uh, natural gas, and then it's good if we can just ensure that it's quite clean. 
So we need to get rid of all these things before we can uh, use the fuel stream into the anode. Basically, carbon oxide and dioxide, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, and even some carbon particles, which can poison the catalysts and even the electrolyte. So depends on which is the temperature and the fuel cell that we use. Um, this or the, the requirements of purity of these components will be one or another and then we will have to consider uh, which is the balance cost the cost balance that we have in the overall plan but in general terms if we use high temperatures fuel cells we will be able um, to have higher levels of impurities and if we have low temperatures fuel cells we will be forced to have very pure um, hydrogen streams so after fuel cleaning, which is uh, getting rid of all these uh, components that we saw in the previous slide, we will have to reform the fuel. So fuel reforming is probably the most important operation in fuel pretreatment. And it consists on, of signing um, stream rich in hydrogen from the methane, which is natural gas, which is obtained uh, from the commercial pipeline. So this is done through these equations which are endothermic reactions it means that we will require some energy to do them and well as an alternative we can use uh, part of the heat which will be um, obtained in the electrochemical reaction of fuel cell we will be able to use this heat into these equations so uh, this, these reactions so that the cost is decreased of the operation there are several types of reforming, steam reforming, partial oxidation reforming, autothermic reforming, but the most important and the most common is the steam reforming, which uses a water stream mm, to, well, perform these reactions. Yeah? Steam at high temperature. Well, indeed, and as I said before, we can reform anything, uh, basically any hydrocarbon, by the help of water in order to obtain um, hydrogen. So reforming can be either external if it's carried out outside the fuel cell or internal if it is carried out inside the fuel cell. This can only be achieved if the fuel cell is working at high temperatures. Why? Because again that is a very endothermic reaction so we need to have very high temperatures here if we want this reaction to work properly so apart from the reforming equations there are other side reactions which can affect negatively uh, the way that reforming occurs which can be the formation of methane or the compensation of, of methane or formation of some carbon um, carbon particles which can again poison our electrolytes or electrodes. So we need to take into account the different um, reactions and the temperature in order to select the proper conditions for carrying out this reforming in the fuel cell. So apart from cleaning and reforming we need to make sure that the input stream to the anode for its oxidation has a proper uh, amounts of water, CO, CO2, and of course must be very clean. And um, it's very usual, it's very common also to pressurize and warm up the stream before it gets to the anode because the conditions of the fuel cell, well, uh, under these conditions of high pressures and temperatures, in general terms, the fuel cells will, wor will work in a better way and yeah. will obtain a better thermal efficiency. Um, this all were about um, like previous operation um, considering the fuel cell but then we will have also to take into account the posterior applications which are basically the treatment of the electricity that we obtain which will be in the form of direct current because it will be just a very simple flow of electrons so in order to transport and storage this electricity as you might know it is important that we use alternate current so we will need to have a conversion in our plant hmm, before to um, get rid of the electricity 
Um, well, just to finish with this uh, presentation, I'd like to show some of the flux or flow diagrams of the plants which are already induced to obtain electricity using fuel cells. In all the diagrams you will see that the modules of fuel cells are here and then we have uh, different um, units which will be performing retreatment operations uh, like cleaning of the gas, uh, the conversion, the, um, this will be the reforming the reforming tank and also pressurizing and heating by using compressors. Um, depending on the type of fuel cells used, we will have different pretreatment operations. In general terms, they all have this compression and this warming up um, stages. But uh, if you see here from this stream, which is natural gas stream, the number of the pretreatment operations will vary depending on the temperature of the fuel cells and the kind of fuel cells we use. Uh, again, here, by instance here, we have less operations than in this case and less than in this case. This case could be maybe an example of low temperature fuel cells which require very pure hydrogen streams here at the entrance of the, of the anode. While this could be, I think indeed it is, an example of a fuel cell working at very high temperatures and then we only need to have um, a very short and brief cleaning operation. Again, this is another example. Uh, in this case, I think well, we've got two different systems of fuel cells. This is solid oxide fuel cells. And how, at the end of the day, what we have is the generation of some electricity. As a conclusion, um, when we are dealing uh, with big scale operation in a technological point of view, we need to take into account not only uh, facts affecting fuel cells behavior but also some other operations like pre-treatment operations or post-treatment operations. The most important pre-treatment operation is reforming which is basically the way that we obtain pure hydrogen to uh, have a stream to get into the anode and for its oxidation. But also it is important that this stream is very clean so we'll have to clean the fuel before it gets to the anode. Um, just I would like to remark as well that uh, when we design a plant it's very important that we consider that the efficiency will uh, depend not only on how good our fuel cells are but also on, on how good we are in taking advantage of the energy which is produced in parts of the plant and use it in another part of the plant when this energy will be consumed. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, see you in another presentation.